we have studied all the types, various types of equation that is Euler's equation, Bernoulli's equation, Navier-Stokes equation for an incompressible fluid flow. Let us derive the same equation for a compressible fluid flow. Bernoulli's equation in compressible fluid flow. Before studying Bernoulli's equation, we know what is an Euler equation, okay. So, according to Euler's equation, we know that dP by rho, that is change in pressure upon its density, plus V into dV plus G into dz is equals to 0. Now, what is this that is this is pressure energy head this is kinetic energy head and this is potential energy head so all these energy head is always zero now anyways so we know what is euler's equation integral of euler's equation will give us bernoulli's equation now we have studied what is bernoulli's equation here since it is a compressible uh, fluid flow this term over here that is the potential energy flow uh, energy head will integration of this part will give us g into z hmm? similarly this part will give us v square by 2 but in integral of change in pressure with respect to density we cannot take density out of this integral sign because the density for a compressible fluid flow is also changing so in incompressible fluid flow we used to take this this integral we used to write as p upon rho but for incompressible for compressible fluid flow we cannot write this term so now we have to consider a various types of processes in which pressure and density are related to each other so one of the basic process which we are going to take into consideration is an isothermal process. Now, what is an isothermal process? We already have studied in lower class of thermodynamics. Isothermal processes are processes in which the temperature of that entire fluid remains constant. So, we know that for an isothermal process, we'll assume first an isothermal process. temperature is a constant and equation of isothermal process represents that the product of PV is equals to MRT. So we know this what is isothermal process. We can take this mass in the denominators P upon M is equals to R into T which can be considered as a constant because PV is equals to MRT which is a constant so this is P upon a rho can be considered as a constant and this constant is equals to P upon rho and a rho can be written as rho can be written as P upon C so this we have come to an conclusion so now for de deriving Bernoulli's equation, we know that dP upon rho, that is integral, plus V square by 2 plus G into Z is equals to 0. Uh, is equals to not 0. This will be constant. So, now let us focus on this first term now over here we have to evaluate that is integral of change in pressure upon its own density so this is integral of dp upon density from the previous part we have written this as equals to rho is equals to p by c so we'll substitute over here p and c in the numerator so 
the integral of this entire part will be c into integral of dp by p which will give us this is equals to c into ln natural log of p so we have got what is change in its pressure upon its own density that is integral of change in pressure upon its own density is equals to c into ln of p so now let us substitute this in that entire equation so what do we get over here c into ln of p plus v2 square by 2 v v2 uh, v square by 2g into gz is equals to constant but we already know what is value of c from the previous section the value of a c is equals to p upon rho so let us substitute the value of c as a p upon rho so what do we get this as t ln of p upon rho plus v square by 2 plus gz is equals to constant or we can write this as uh, or we can write this as p1 ln of p1 upon rho 1 plus v1 square by 2 plus g into z1 is equals to p2 ln of p2 upon rho 2 plus v2 square v2 square by 2 plus g into z2 now how this equation has come actually whenever we integrate this euler equation which is over here whenever we integrate this euler's equation whenever we integrate this euler's equation now we have to assume these limits that is from p1 to p2 as well as from rho 1 to rho 2 and this is from v1 to v2 and this is from z1 to z2 so over there whenever we integrate we take the higher value minus the lower value that is upper limit minus lower limit hence we will on organizing this we will get this as this entire equation and that part will be equals to zero now so this is the initial pressure ln of rho 1 so here we have four quantities that is pressure which will be changing the density which will be changing velocity will which, which will be changing as well as the z which will be changing so when whenever we have this energy equation or bernoulli's equation over here the values of p rho v and z there are four variables in which the bernoulli's equation is expressed for an isothermal condition now let us see the same part for an adiabatic process now for an adiabatic process we know that for an adiabatic process let us consider bernoulli's equation According to adiabatic process, we have definition of adiabatic process. We have seen that PV raised to gamma is equals to constant or MRT or we can write this as equals to constant or we can also write this as P upon rho raised to gamma is equals to constant. Now how this term has come? We know this equals to PV raised to gamma is equals to MRT. So this can be written as P upon PV raised to gamma upon M is equals to RT. We'll take a variable M dash whose raised to R who raised to gamma is equals to M. So we can evaluate the value of M dash over here. So this will be V raised to gamma upon m dash raised to gamma both have same is equals to constant so hence p upon rho raised to gamma is equals to constant so that is how we have got for an adiabatic process so over here we can write this part as the value of a rho is equals to p upon c the whole raised to 1 upon 
gamma. So now we have to calculate what is integral of integral of dp upon rho. So rho can be written as rho can be written as p upon c raised to 1 upon gamma. So this is integral of dp upon p raised to gamma that is 1 upon gamma and c raised to 1 upon gamma. So let us integrate this part. So we have to integrate dp upon p raised to 1 upon gamma and c raised to 1 upon gamma. So when we integrate this we can write this as equals to p raised to minus gamma into dp into c raised to 1 upon gamma. We have to integrate this. So this will give us that is p raised to minus 1 upon gamma plus 1 upon minus 1 upon gamma plus 1 into c raised to 1 upon gamma. Now if we cross multiply this will give as p raised to gamma minus 1 upon gamma upon this part will be also given as gamma minus 1 upon gamma and this will be c raised to 1 upon gamma. So this is simple mathematics over here. We'll substitute the value of c. We have seen from the previous part the constant can be replaced in this manner. So we'll substitute the value of c as p upon rho. So what do we get over here? So this can be written as p raised to gamma minus 1 upon gamma upon gamma minus 1 upon gamma into p upon rho p upon rho p upon rho raised to gamma raised to 1 upon gamma. So over here we will get this part as p gamma minus 1 upon gamma into p raised to 1 upon gamma upon gamma minus 1 upon gamma into a rho raised to rho raised to 1. Over here this won't have any term because when it is multiplied it is raised to 1. So then we can add these two terms. So what do we get over here is gamma upon gamma minus 1 p gamma minus 1 upon gamma plus 1 upon gamma upon rho upon what we have the value of rho over here. So we can add this part. So this part over here 1 and 1 will go away and rho of uh, gamma upon gamma will be equals to 1. So ultimately what we have got over here is integral of dp upon a rho is equals to p upon rho into gamma upon gamma minus 1. So this is what is the integral of this entire part. Now we have to just put this integral in Bernoulli's equation. So what do we we'll get over here? p upon rho into gamma upon gamma minus 1 plus v square by 2 plus g into z is equals to constant or we can write this as equals to p1 upon rho1 into gamma upon gamma minus 1 plus v1 square by 2 plus g into z1 this will be equals to p2 upon rho2 into gamma upon gamma minus 1 plus v2 square by 2 plus g into z2. So this is Bernoulli's equation for an incompressible fluid flow but the process over here is an adiabatic process. So incompressible fluid flow <clears throat> what is the difference from an incompressible fluid flow if the density is changing? The rate at which the density is changing that will be given by, by the types of process we take into consideration. So we have seen two types of processes that is an isothermal process and an adiabatic process in which the change in density will vary 
according to the process. I hope you have understood how we have calculated this Bernoulli's equation for an isothermal process as well as for an adiabatic process. Thank you.